Hi, Money Magicians. How are you? Welcome to yet another Money Magic Podcast. If you've just joined, my name is Vangile Makwakwa and I am a money trauma coach. I help mainly women of color heal ancestral money trauma so they can fall in love with their bank accounts, increase income and live their best lives. Today, I have Nonto Vego Zwane as a podcast guest and she is going to be talking to us about her experience in the Money Magic course. So I'm very, very excited. It's always such a pleasure for me to interview Money Magic students because it just has so many aha moments and for myself and even for people listening in. And I haven't interviewed a Money Magic student, I think in about two months now on the podcast. So yay, welcome Dr. Vega. Thank you. Thank you, Vangile. Hi, money magicians. Um, my name is Dante Bogoswani, like Vangile had mentioned. I'm a money magic student. I've been doing the work, I think, from 2021. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've known about your work, Van, um, I think 2018, 2019, uh, oh. from Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, it's been great. It's been a lot. Been said the highs and lows of being a money magic student, yeah, everything that has came up before, and yeah, but I'm still here. I'm loving it, and I'm not going anywhere because this work has, ha, ah, have helped me in a lot of ways in a way that I never thought I needed healing in. So it has changed my life practically. It has changed my life. Uh, I do it with my daughter now, <laughs> not, not so often, here, but she knows this is the thing for us. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited that you yeah. invited me. <laughs> you know, I love it because so many of my clients say that they do the work with their children. And at times I'm like, oh my gosh. And people have been like, yeah, my daughters, like my children are like 10, 12. Some children are obviously in their teens and even like in their 20s and I'm always like wow so it's always been so beautiful for me to hear that because I just think to myself can you imagine I always say this that I wish that the work had been channeled to me before my 20s because I got it in my 20s I wish I had got it in my teens but obviously couldn't because then there would be the trauma that I needed to go through <laughs> would not have been I wouldn't understand things as in there so I'm glad to hear that but before we even start talking about your journey mm -hmm. Nanda tell us who are you as a soul what do you do for a living who who am I as a soul I don't know <laughs> funny you ask me because my <laughs> my Lisa asked me the same question last week um yeah. and wow no miss I don't know hey and she was like could you tell me or could, I just wanted she wanted me to write it down to say who are you beside if I were to take away your work your child um everything else that you do who are you because I was sharing with her that I'm struggling with writing letters to money I was like mm -hmm. I've tried but I end up not knowing what to write like because you don't know who you are you need to uh, try and find that who oh, I am mm -hmm. I don't know, hey, I, I don't know how to answer the question. I don't know. But all I know is, <laughs> honestly, I'm, I don't know. Oh, that's the wrong right answer. Um, Me, um, <laughs> I'm a gentle soul. Um, I'm a fun-loving person. Uh, I love people. I love resting, which I did not know that I liked. Uh, or even it was a thing that it said I need to prioritize resting. I enjoy me time. I enjoy time alone where I just sit and just maybe read a book or just sleep. Um, yeah. Um, I love pe helping people, being with people, helping them, and uh, what else? Yeah, that's me. I don't know. I guess what was the other question? <laughs> the other, what was your question? What do you do for a living? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but I do. Uh, I'm a registered nurse by profession. Um, yeah, I'm a registered nurse by profession. I've been. Uh, I'm an ICU nurse. 
I've worked in ICU mm -hmm. um, staff because I didn't get in ICU. Um, but my other passion is um, I've got a degree in nature conservation because while after I think seven years into nursing, because I love the nature, the wildlife, the plants, I was like, let me pursue that interest. So I went back to varsity and did um, uh, my degree in nature conservation, which I've never used. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I'm a nurse at the moment. Yes, I'm a nurse. Wow, so I did <laughs> not know this about you and, a nature, and being a nature conservationist. But yes, it also yes. explains <laughs> so much to me when you write your comments about after doing your spirit of money work and what's coming up and being led to do gardens and farming and all that. So you actually are trained to do this. <laughs> you know, it only hit me when I started doing the work, when my personal grandmother, who was a farmer, because my personal family, they were farmers. So it only yeah. hit me when those came up to do the meditation, they're like, oh, wait, maybe that's why I was led into doing the degree in nature conservation because mm -hmm. I come from the soil. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. And I was like, but yeah, uh, so yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I love natural, the plants, the wildlife, the rain, the soil, mm -hmm. the animals. I'm passionate about those things. I love them. They calm me. I interact with. I understand them. Um, I just feel at home, at ease when I'm in the environment, whether it's wildlife or in the nature reserves or I'm working in a small Indian garden. Anything to do with that, it just I just feel like I'm home. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and. It feels like you are being led there by spirit as well, you know? Yes. So I really, really love that. I love that, like, things have happened in your life to lead you there. And I'm so, so glad that you're starting to listen to those impulses, for lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no, Tobago. So... How do you define money? I know you've been doing a lot of spirit of money work. If an alien had to land on this planet and they asked, what is money? How would you, what would you tell them? What is money? Hmm, money. I would say money is a tool or it's, um, yeah, I would say it's a, it's a tool that we use to, that, to ex help us experience things. Um, fun could be anything you want to experience. It's just a tool that we use to experience the things we want to experience in our lives. Whether it's traveling, it's fun. Um, yeah, it just makes whatever you want to experience possible. Mm -hmm. I really, really love that. That's a beautiful answer, actually. So okay. let's start talking about your relationship with money. I love doing these interviews with Money Magic students, and I know people love listening to them as well, mainly because we're all on our money journeys and we want to know what other people have been through, right? So what is it that brought you into the Money Magic course so that you start doing just money work? I mean, you've been following me for, in 2018, 2019, what was the shift for you to go, hmm, listening to her on these free Facebook lives is no longer the thing for me. <laughs> I need to go to <laughs> her. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, for me, it comes, it, I had to go through physical pain. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pain that I've been going through for a greater part of my life, but I was, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't understand that. I need to attend to this pain. And so, like I said, I've been following you for, on Facebook for free from clips from um, when I see them. But it happened when 2020, okay, I was, like I said, I'm a nurse. So in 2020, I got a job. I went to Saudi Arabia. 2020, June. 2021, mm -hmm. no, no, 2020, end of 2020. 
I got sick in Saudi. It was COVID time. I hadn't been mm -hmm. home um, because I was supposed to come home in July, but because of COVID and the lockdowns, I couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. I got sick, I think it was August. Um, my whole body was painful. All my joints were sore. I had splitting, terrible headaches. I couldn't sit up. I was admitted for three weeks um, at work. All tests were done, all investigations, blood, CT scan, brain scan, chest, uh, CT, everything you could think of. Mm -hmm. COVID swapped, I don't know how many times, everything came back negative. But I was mm -hmm. suffering. I was admitted in our ICU for two weeks, then the other week I was in a high care. Then I was discharged because doctors were like, we can't find anything wrong with you. I remember sure. Dr. Mahe, who was from Jordan, who was our head of ICU, um, chief ICU doctor. So she, when he came to visit me, I was still in ICU at the time. They were doing ward rounds. So he's like, he used to call me Miss Nondo. So like, Miss Nondo. He said on my bed, he's like, Miss Nondo, I can see that you are suffering, but you are perfectly healthy. We cannot find anything, not one thing that's off. Everything of yours is clean negative. Mm -hmm. And then we had a discussion and I said, can you please just let me go home back to South Africa? Maybe my South African doctors, they will find something or they will think of an investigation we haven't done. Maybe that can pick up what's exactly wrong with me. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't have a shower. I couldn't sit up when I'm like, when I'm in bed and when I reach out for a glass of water. That few seconds of me raising my head and reaching out for a glass of water to drink my head it will be like somebody is splitting it in two with an x so eventually i was discharged i stayed in the villa for another week or so still off sick something in me i was like it clicked there's a lady ubu sister she's a money not a money she's a money coach i had bought her book a um, couple of years before that, before I left the country. So I've been following her and I've had some healing sessions with her. So, and we have done some meditation with her. And mm -hmm. then I reached out to her during mm -hmm. that moment of being in the villa in homes and sick. To so say, Busi, those have tried everything. I've been sick for mm -hmm. over a month now. Mm -hmm. Before I reached out to her, I was like, okay, the body can heal itself. I was like, my body can, I want to get better. And I was like, my body can, I believe that the body can heal itself. So I started doing some breathing work, exercises on my own from what Musi has taught me in the mm -hmm. past. So I reached out to her. I sent her, I can't remember it's an email or it's WhatsApp to say, Musi, this is me and I'm sick. This is what has been happening. And I've been doing the breathing work for a few days now and I've noticed a bit that it helps. If I do breathing and later on I rest and then quickly I go have a quick shower for less than five minutes and come back because by the time I finish my head is like I'm gonna die just now. So was it um help me and then you came into my I don't know into my mind again. I was like okay, uh because of Ustin Zimsomi who's also a money magic student um yeah so I was like oh okay there's this lady that Ustin is following. Okay, then I reached out to Senzi, and then she gave me your how to contact you. Then that's when I said, okay, I need to do this because I'm like, now my body has shown me a bit that it responds to the breath work I've been doing. Let me mm -hmm. get somebody who professional in this to help me try and heal myself. So I reached out, sent the email, we did the discovery call, and then and that's how I joined. Mm -hmm. Then we started working with it, and when I had and I was I was still go back to the day when I was supposed to have a discovery call with um I forgot the lady that you work with, but she was not available. And you then you that. and you yes, and I remember you told me you you had just finished your yoga session and you realized you it was my email or something yeah. that not going to be attended and you reached out and yeah. I was it was, it was meant to happen. You would see my <laughs> discovery call you attend to it. I was like ah. Oh. <laughs> so that I was like for me that was a sign you could see this is who you need right now <laughs> so I'll never forget that I was like oh god I was happy I was happy I was happy I was like oh 
<laughs> anyway, so that happened. <laughs> so that happened, and then you took me through, and I shared what I was going through, and you broke it down into pieces, and it made sense. And I remember I cried. I'm like, oh wow, it, you made everything make sense, and I understand why the healing, why this pain, and um, so. I remember you told me, Guti, you've had, you've never had money in your life. You've never had mm -hmm. this for you. This is like millions for your system, for your body. You've never, you've never seen it at home. You've never had it yourself. That's why mm -hmm. your body is acting up like this. So mm -hmm. you shocked. It's shocked. So you need to, I don't know, teach your body mm -hmm. or like just to, like your body needs to, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Your yeah, nervous system needs to hold, exactly. learn to hold that amount of money. Yes. And then <laughs> I shared with you, because you know, some of the money I've made, I've also all, already given it away, or it's not long, even though I still had money at the time, but a lot of it I had already given, get got rid of it. And you're like, oh. this, because you're, you're not used to this, your system is shocked, it's not used to this. That's why the money had to go. And then that's how I, that's why I started the work. That's how I landed up here. And I got better. And then eventually I was given an permit to come back and the exit visa to come back to the country. You know, mm -hmm. I came back to the country and my, my, even my unit manager was like, you need to go and see a doctor at that side and keep us updated. I landed mm -hmm. home. First two days, I would wake up with these headaches, but not so bad. And then by 10 o'clock, I don't have a headache. I never saw, not even a GP. I never saw mm -hmm. a doctor. I was admitted the headache just went away and I was home. I got healed. I don't know by what, but I got healed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I continued with the work. So <laughs> up until today, people, when even people that I used to work with in Saudi, when I tell them, even my family, they're like, remember you were dying and you came to die. <laughs> But you never went to see a doctor. But you got better. Were you re people were like, were you really sick? Like, guys, I was suffering. I was suffering. Of course, I still have my desk with my images, my CT scans, and everything, my blood, everything that was done in Saudi. I have it in a desk. Like, guys, this is me. I was ill. I've got pictures when my colleagues will come visit me in hospital because yeah. I'm telling you, like, you are dying now. So, this is how I landed up here. So, the work. Wow. It helped me. It, it, it helped me. No, I'm glad. Um, nothing, but I got help. And I I'm understood so why I had to go through that to get to where I am today. Yeah. The work healed me too. It's so funny. Like, why I understand the physical ailments is because I feel like this work also healed me physically because I also had issues with my digestion, my tailbone, things that don't make a lot of sense on a medical level, you know? And like, I was told like, there's nothing that can be done for the digestion. You can just eat, you have to eat and like food will heal you. But I was like, the food can't be digested. We have a problem and I'm not mm. willing to go through surgery. So. I get you. The It's really, really challenging. And it's so hard for people listening to this. It's so challenging to understand what was happening in terms of the money and the nervous system. Not all ailments are linked to money. And so the, the work won't help you in that way, you guys. Some things are truly medical. But for someone like Nontobego, all I did was I just sat down and I asked her, walk me through your life up until now, which is what I do with people in Discovery Calls. I'm like, okay, I hear you, walk me through things. And then I'll ask questions that will seem like, oh, this is so basic, you know, <laughs> until my clients realize why I'm starting to ask these questions because there are certain things that happen to us, especially when there are no medical explanations as and it's linked to money. It's that, there are certain things that happen when we have never had money. The way it affects our nervous system is really, really intense. And I'll do a podcast on that. 
so you guys don't have to worry. I'll explain how having more money than you've ever had before can affect your nervous system. I have truly fallen sick before. Like there was a time when the right side of my body went numb because I had expanded more financially than I'd ever done before. And I knew it was linked to money, you know, because sometimes when you've never had a thing, so much comes into play, the vows, the everything. So this is, and this leads me to my next question with you, Nanda Vega. What are some, what were some of your aha moments from the course? What were some of your, some of the lessons that made you just pause and gave you a deeper understanding of trauma and ancestral trauma in particular? Oh, there have been so many. Um, but the one <laughs> thing that I really, really, not that I'm not grateful for the other things, I am, but for me personally, the one thing that's close to my soul, that is a takeaway for doing the work or for learning that there is a healing journey that helps us heal our traumas. For me, is the fact that um, I come from a broken family. Mm -hmm. Um. For me, it's the fact that my daughter, she's 12. Um, Uka Mvaletu, her name is Gambaletu. The fact that Uka Mvaletu, my mom's late. Uh, she passed away when I was 21. So mm -hmm. for me, the biggest takeaway is the fact that Uka Mva is not being raised by my mother. Because even mm -hmm. though my mom is late, if I had not done the work, uh, that I've done so far in terms of healing my childhood traumas and all my ish. Ukambaletu would have been raised by me, but I would have been what my mother was to me, to Ukambaletu. So I would be my mother, it would be my mother practically raising my daughter. So because of the work and because of the things I've seen and realized in my life of what the work shifts, I'm mm -hmm. grateful that the things I had to heal from, from my childhood, she will never have to heal from those things. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, um, I feel like I'm doing the work, yes, for myself, but also mm -hmm. I'm doing it for her. So it just mm -hmm. gives me greatest pleasure to know, Guti, all the layers of trauma, all the painful things I went through, all the painful things I saw, painful things that I experienced and that were said to me as a child growing up, she will never have to go through such. So for mm. me, that's the most biggest of them all. She, mm. I can't protect her from all the traumas in life, but for, from on that part, I'm happy with something that she'll never have to deal with. So that makes mm -hmm. me feel good to have done the best as a mom for her. So yeah, that is my biggest, biggest, biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that, I mean, I feel like that's what I hear a lot of with moms, right? Is that by them doing this work, they are freeing their children from having to do the work again. And I think, and it's interesting because I had this conversation with my financial advisor, Janine, and she was saying, so many people come to her and they say, what can I do to change my relationship with money? And she, so that, oh no, what can I do so that my children have a better relationship with money? And she says, she always tells them, change your relationship with money. Your children are watching you. They are sensing you. Change your relationship. There's, yes. uh, there's a lot to be said about obviously doing for our kids and teaching them things. But when we change, we automatically start to change our children and the way they view the world because of how we show up and what we're able to give to them, which is so, so powerful. So what you've just said made me think of Shanine, but it also leads me to my next question, which is about um, your relationship with money. How was your relationship with money before you understood 
trauma and understood just like how our parents instill their money trauma on us unintentionally obviously and mm. how has that now changed now that you have been doing the work how's your relationship with money so um before the work my relationship in fact i never knew that one has a relationship there is a thing called a relationship being having having a relationship with money um, but my relationship before, I mean, with money, before I learned uh, about the work, it was bad. Um, I would use money because, like I said, I come from a troubled home. Mm -hmm. I would use money to so that people can love me. I would use, um, I'll do things for people so that they can accept me. Uh, and I believe that for me to be loved by friends um maybe at school or at college or at work wherever you need to do stuff for people if i've got money and you want something i'll give you that last one that i have because a part of me wants to be accepted by you and i want you to look at me and say ah she helped me there therefore she's my good friend mm -hmm. um so yeah i think i, I used money to buy acceptance mm -hmm. and um also for me, I never knew that I needed to, if I have money, I needed to use the money for fun. For me, fun is foreign. I'm only learning now in my adulthood that it's okay to have fun. It's okay to use your money for something that excites you. That for me was, if you've got money, you're holding, you need to hold on to it. You need to buy food. You need to buy and also, even if you're buying food, you're not buying the nice stuff. If you're buying ice cream, you're wasting it. You need to buy maize meal. You need to buy, I don't know, chicken so that you can cook curry. Um, <laughs> also, the fun part was a big thing for me because I never, I at 11 years old, I had to be an adult at home. I had to look after my siblings. I had to do adult stuff in terms of washing and earning for my dad and, and running a home because mm -hmm. my mom was gone. And my stepmom was working away in a in a area far away from home, so she would only come home once a month. Yes, so I needed to grow up from the age of eleven. So fun, I never had fun. So I it was difficult for me to learn to use money for the things that I love, for things that I that excite me, that I consider fun. Even today, I still struggle, but now, because I know better, I am doing a bit better. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's how my relationship with money has changed. Also, I used to use the word of black, I don't have money. Ah, money is doesn't grow from trees. Uh, if you've got money, hold on to it. Um, don't go splashing and wasting money. A lot of things that we need, that we do with money, for me, it was waste, no, to waste, no, to waste, no, you can't do that because... But if it runs out, I'm not going to have it tomorrow kind of thing. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. So this also leads me to the next question I want to um, take up from what you've just said, just continue from what you've just shared. How do you think having fun with money? Because someone is listening here and being like, you I'm being led down the path of letting go of my money and I'm going to end up losing money. Like here, I'm not hearing anything about budgeting. In fact, I'm being taken away from that mindset. <laughs> because that's what I grew up with, right? Like I don't have money. So I must hold on to money for dear life. How has... um? that having fun with money started to change where the way that you make money, save money, invest money. Have you seen a shift? Were you able to save money before and invest money? And what shift has happened now that you're actually allowing yourself to have fun with money? Hasn't that made you a broke woman? <laughs> ah. <laughs> the been a shift, not a shift. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. You know, now I enjoy money. I enjoy doing, like yesterday, for example, 
Um, this year was Monday, yes. Um, we're supposed to go out uh to work like I normally do, but because we had to back we had back to back meetings, uh, we decided mm -hmm. no, we're gonna work from home. So at two, I was done. Then I went to the car wash, did my car, and then later on, I was like, ah, my daughter is away for holidays. I'm home alone, and I like, okay, let me go out for coffee. You know, I went <laughs> to the North Beach, to all in. I sat there. It was around half past five, six o'clock in the afternoon. I went there just, I was like, ah, let me just go out for coffee and cake. I, I enjoyed it. It was two, three hours of me. And oh, I had my book, the, um, the title of the new book again. Oh, um, um, changing my <laughs> What's yeah. your money personality? <laughs> yes, money personality. <laughs> I had my book with me because I, I like, ah, I'm going to the car. I hate going to the car wash. So I I always bring something to read. So I, like, ah, I haven't finished this book. I'm towards the end, but I haven't finished it. Let me take my book with mm -hmm. me. So I went there, read my set and read my book. So I went with my book. So I went out for two hours, two to three hours, just for coffee dates on my own with my book. <laughs> so that's what I enjoyed. It was a beautiful three hours for me because I was like, ah. It feels good. I'm out on my own. I'm having coffee and cake and I've got a book and I'm nice and warm. So for me, that was, and I actually thought about it like, hmm, I haven't done this in a while. And I kind of missed it. I'm not aware that I missed it, but this I was like, hmm, this feels good. I missed it. <laughs> so that's, that's one. That's like the most recent thing I did. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, the other thing is now that I, I don't, Okay, no, no, don't budget as much. I don't save as much. But one of the shifts that I've done or that have happened in my life is when it comes to money is now that I've been doing the work and I understand money better. Um, I've been I'm a I've been able to put systems in place, of course, for my to safeguard myself and my daughter. Now mm -hmm. I'm happy to say I've got a family trust for my child. Uh, that I've done <laughs> thanks to your guidance I'm like oh I sleep better at night I'm happy when I see everything happening I'm like I'm building something I don't have millions in my bank account or a fat mm -hmm. bank account balance but mm -hmm. that is something that I will not have done in this lifetime nobody have done it in my family so I'm like okay it's something that I'm doing for me and my daughter um i've got a special will that i have that's specifically tailored for like i said my child special needs kids like hair um yeah. when i'm gone it will take care of it of her it, yeah it will take care of her so and she, and, not, and and not as much tax will be taken to to run to round up the estate when i'm gone so because of a condition so for me, those are systems, those are tools, those are things that are in place for my child. For me also, now that I'm still alive, that just puts my mind at ease. Things that have never been, that it, none of, it had never happened in my family. So, but I learned of those things, of those systems, because of the work that I've been doing, the work that you and Mr. and the other people that you work with that help us guide and understand money better um what else yeah it's that so it is also the other thing that i've not realized is you know i've been working from 20, 2003 before when it's payday i will have panic attacks i will hate paydays i'll be stressed i'll because already you have not been paid but already in my mind i'm like oh gosh it's gonna come then it's gonna go even before i touch it no. Mm -hmm. now it, that doesn't happen I'm, I'm like oh it's payday I, I don't even get excited because oh it's payday money is coming because I'm like I'm okay I am wow. okay I don't panic say oh my end who am I gonna pay who am I not gonna pay how am I gonna end, make ends meet is the grocery gonna be enough will I be able to pay for school fees oh the helper salary where is it gonna come from no now I'm calmer around month end. I don't look forward to month and say, let the money come so I can do these things. No, I'm I'm calm. I'm relaxed. I don't, when it comes, when payday happens, I'm like, I'm relaxed. I, I, 
I don't worry who takes what money, what debit goes out, what debit is not is going to bounce back unpaid. I don't panic about the fact that maybe I'm going to run short and run out of money and I still have people that I have not paid. It doesn't happen. And for me, that's a big thing because it's something that I panicked and stressed about for years, for years, for years. So yeah, for me, that it, it gives me peace of mind. It uh, it makes me to be more relaxed and just chill. Cause okay, let life happens continue as it's supposed to continue. You don't have to worry about this because I know I'm supported. I've got the work. So mm -hmm. that's that's a shift, that's a big thing for me. So I find that I'm calm. I'm calm because really, hey, I've <laughs> I've been going through a lot <laughs> with money. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Thank you for sharing that. You know, so many people are listening to this and they can resonate. Honestly, I think so many people can resonate with that payday stress. You know, you've got so much debt, your money comes in and you don't. This used to be definitely my thing when I was heavily in debt. As soon as money comes in, it's like, it was like, it was never there. It might as well not have come. You know? <laughs> don't feel like you were paid yesterday. <laughs> right? And like, end of the month, to enter end of the month and still have money in your bank account. Yo, mm -hmm. that was like, I could never have envisioned that in my life. You know? Also, that's so I end. So, when you don't finish, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying, Alyssa, I completely resonate with why that is life changing. But continue. Thank you. I just wondered, then uh, you just said something about debt, then it hits me. Uzi. That's another thing for me. Uzi. Before I had a lot of debts, I was blacklisted. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I had maxed my two credit cards. I remember I had an FNB loan back then. So I was in debt. I was struggling. I was unhappy. I was miserable. But now that I know better because of the work that I've been doing, uh, the money work, I don't have any debt. Okay, it's only my car. So I'm like, I, I, I'm not even tempted to go open unnecessary accounts. I don't have an account. So I'm like, I find it before I will struggle, I will pay off the steps, then I go open another one, pay off that one, like not pay it off easily. I will struggle. They will call me several times, SMS me, WhatsApp me and whatever. But as soon as I finish this step, I'll go and open another step somewhere else. That's what was like just a cycle for me. But now I found that with the work, I. I think I understand myself better now and I can, I'll say, I will not say control, but I don't have the edge to go and open an unnecessary debt. And for me, that's a big thing to say, hmm, do you need that? No, you don't need it. Okay, no, it's fine. You're going to buy that cash if you want it, or you're going to mm -hmm. save towards it or whatever. So for me, and I'm happy with it, I've learned this now because my daughter, she's 12 and I'm like, I'm going to be able to teach her better how to interact with money. You would see this is how you conduct yourself around your monies. You don't have to have these panic attacks and be stressed like I, like go through to what I went through with money. So for me, that's a big thing. We'll see that debt story, You, I know now how to manage it better and with a calm mind and soul and yeah, so it's it feels good not to be harassed with calls and debts and 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 so yes. Oh yeah, you <laughs> darling unlisted numbers. If your number was not on my phone, I wasn't answering it. I just wasn't because I owe too many people. So I get you. I get you so much. Um, and I'm glad that you shared that, but. For me, what I love about the work, right, is that you have not once mentioned run a, doing a budget and forcing yourself to stick to a budget. You just did the inner work and that deep 
inner wisdom came through from past lives, from ancestral lifetimes, all that. And you just know it within you how to deal with money. But our trauma just covers all that up. And then on top of that, we are taught by well-meaning people in our society that we need to discipline ourselves. And there's only so much willpower you can have for discipline. It's going to run out if you're using discipline. So not that I don't have to <laughs> But it's sorry. Yes, because it's painful also to try and discipline yourself because you're trying to fit your whole life in this small box. Okay, I need to budget mm -hmm. that and that and that. It's it's uncomfortable. You're doing it if you're doing it at the time, but it's painful. You're not happy. <laughs> you're not happy. You're struggling. You're pulling yourself to do this. You're forcing yourself to do this. And then you don't even stick to it, which breaks your heart again and again and again. And you're like, ah, oh, I failed. Ah, oh, I'm failing. Ah, uh, where is this money? Where did it go? So it's just painful. It's just painful. It is so painful. This is why when people tell me about self-discipline, I'm like, I'm going to have to check out. Has anyone really, really seen me as a person? <laughs> like... Discipline is really not top of my list. But then people are like, but how do you write books? How do you do that? I'm not doing self-discipline. I'm doing a lot of support systems and I'm doing a lot of like inner work so that I am doing work that's straight from the heart and that is led. Because if you're going to use self-discipline, there's only so much power that you have and what most people don't realize about self-discipline is anyone watching this or listening to this you guys can google it and research it but the mind actually gets tired from being constantly disciplined as in like your mind gets exhausted because you keep disciplining yourself i need to do this you keep reminding yourself i don't have to spend that no you can't go and get credit for that no no so over time, what happens by the time we, if we're forcing ourselves to stick to a budget, especially a budget that is challenging to us. So let's say that you're someone that used to spend crazy amounts on Gucci and Versace and all sorts of things and mm -hmm. loved a good, a good time and a good life. Then suddenly someone forces a budget on you. What ends up happening most of the time, especially if you're still going to malls, whatever, you're using up so much discipline not to go buy these things. Probably by the second week or the third week of the month, you are going to crack. The parts of you that are not interested in hearing you are eventually going to get just a tiny space to hijack you and take over because your mind gets tired of discipline. So what you actually want is to do the work to figure out what are the triggers that are making me go spend and then integrating all those parts of yourself that are being traumatized so that you keep spending money or getting rid of money. And then what Nantovero is talking about just happens naturally. The urge to spend just disappears. And I've experienced the exact same thing, Dr. Vega. I used to be someone that would walk into malls and shops and see so many things that I want. Nowadays, it's so challenging for me to walk in. I'm so selective. And it's actually made me a better shopper in terms of the clothing I get, in terms of dresses I buy, all that, because now I'm so aware of what it is that I truly like. It's not about spending just to get rid of money or to impress others. It's about spending in a way that aligns with my values and my vision. So I love that. And my next question is to say, you have manifested even the job that you want and the hours that you work. When I heard that, I was like, OMG, <laughs> this was something that you would write about consistently. <laughs> and I'd be like, just keep doing the work. <laughs> yeah. But tell us a little about, about that. Congratulations again, hey? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, guys, yo, the work. 
you know when Uva Gila says the work works, trust me, the work works. <laughs> it works. In a whole lot of ways, it works. Okay. Um I'm used to working. Uh, I was working at uh, in a private hospital, so doing a 12-hour shift. I was on night shift for the past two years, from 2022, yes, up until February this year. Up until, yeah, end of February this year. So I was tired. I was working, I stay in Devon. So I was working at Port Shepston, which is two hour drive from Devon to Port Shepston. So I will go to Port Shepston. I was renting that side. So I'll go to Port Shepston for that seven days. Like I'll leave in the, on the Wednesday afternoon to go start my shift at night. Then uh, up until the next Wednesday morning, I'll drive back to Devon. Then I'm off for seven days. So I was tired. There is the other reason why I, when I was in Saudi, why, besides the fact that I was sick, why I had to come back, because my contract was for five years, but I stayed there for two years. One, because mm -hmm. I got sick. Two, also, in the midst of all that, my sickness, my daughter also was not well. Mm -hmm. She was struggling at school, and she was misbehaving at school and at home. So she had to be admitted and sedated to try and figure out what was happening with her. Because daughters, they thought maybe she's having silent seizures. That's why the change of behavior. So they mm -hmm. they did the EEGs. They were clean, normal. It doesn't. There was no indication that she's having convulsions. So mm -hmm. they referred her to a psychologist that deals with children and neurophysicist that deals with children. So she was sent by the doctor, and then. The conclusion or the diagnosis after the four sessions she had over once a week, over over a month, with the psychologist was your child is very stressed. She's highly stressed, and because I've had that, what she said was because um I've had had a session with you via WhatsApp because I was away and to get background on Kambalitu, and I've met your daughter. I don't know why how you left her and go and work so far away from home because you guys are so close, you're too close to, to each other. So now, because she's special needs, she's not um, as strong emotionally like the other 10 year olds her age. So mm -hmm. now it got to a point where she cannot cope with the fact that you only come home once and stay for 30 days and then you go away again for another six, eight months. So mm -hmm. said you need to come home and you cannot ask this child to be to wait for you to be in this condition and hold on whilst you try and gather money that side. Um, she is already on her anti-epileptic medication which suppresses the nervous system. She's on Epilim and Kepra and Lamictin tablets at the time. And now she had to add, she said, I'm gonna prescribe a, an antidepressant for her. That she, a tablet that she'll take once a day at night. So my mind went oh crazy because it's like, oh no, She's already on medication for the convulsions that depresses her nervous system. Now we are adding the antidepressant. And I was like, how much more can this body take? This is just mm -hmm. not fair. So I decided to come home. I remember in my discovery call also, that's what we, I shared and we talked about. And I was like, mm -hmm. despite me wanting the money, but my child needs me more. Right now, mm -hmm. I'm not okay that I'm far and she's suffering at home. So mm -hmm. when I came back, so that's why I had to come back also because I was sick, plus she was not okay. So I even forgot what was the question. But yeah, that's why, um, now, sorry, Ben, can you please just remind me what was the oh, question again? Yeah. Sorry, the question was um, you manifesting this incredible job. Oh, yes, time. Job. So, yes, thank you. So I came back, <laughs> got this job at Post Substance. So I was doing this up and down. Né? Now yeah. it got to the point where she was also now, even though she and now she was spending more time with me, she was starting to mm -hmm. be uncomfortable and not happy. She's like, when I'm back on a Wednesday morning, she'll be happy because I come back on Wednesday, I go pick her up at school and she'll be happy. So it's like, it would be like it's Christmas day for her. Hey, I'm mm -hmm. you're back, hey, she's happy. And then mm -hmm. on a, I'll start prepping her on a Monday to say today it's Monday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, mama's going away to work, then she'll be sad. They started to eat mm -hmm. upon me. And I would say, and she, I would notice because she's not happy. So my child was not happy that I work far away from home. I come home once a week, I'm here, and one week, I'm here, one week, I'm there. So, and then I continued with the work. I shared this with Ungumis, because I was with Ungumis at the time to say, this is what I'm, I'm praying for a job. I just want to come and work closer to home, stay at home with my child. I'm even prepared, even if they can 
can get a hospital where I can transfer back to Deben, even if they pay me exactly the same salary, I will take it because at least mm -hmm. I'll be sleeping at home with my daughter. Then we continue with the, doing the work. And then, boom, I now work for this private company. I stay, I'm back at home from February this year. The hours are crazy. You know, it, I was paying for a hospital setting kind of job. I got even <laughs> better <laughs> what I was paying for. So the work I'm doing, I'm still in this, but working for a private company, the hours are flexible. I, my contract is eight to four, but because I work with doctors now, if a mm -hmm. doctor starts working at 10, I start at 10. If I'm wow. done working at one o'clock, I'm off home, going home, or going to pick up my child at school. So I stay at home with my child now. I'm able to drop her at school. I'm able to pick her up from school. We am able to do homework with her. We're able to go for beach walks in the afternoon. Um, and then she gets to tell me stories what happens in school. So I I've got this time with her, it's it's amazing. I'm enjoying it. She's happy. I'm happy. And I'm not working as hard. It's it comes with better packs than what I was getting before. But the mm -hmm. effort that I'm putting in is not as much. So I don't come home tired. My mind mm -hmm. is not stressed. I'm chilled. I'm, I'm like, I remember when I saw her, like, it doesn't even feel like I'm working. Like today, <laughs> I had to go to two practices, but it doesn't feel like I had to go to two practices. It's just like easy. So I'm doing easy work, being paid better. I've got more time for myself, for my family, for my daughter. It's just easy. Everything is just easy. It does not feel like I'm working. It doesn't. And it just feels good. And I'm like, wow, who knew what I will have th this kind of job that puts me at ease so much because that also allows me to say, I can have more time for the work and more time for my daughter. And the biggest mm -hmm. thing part for me is the time to rest. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm resting every day. I'm resting every day. My body is not tired. My feet are not so. Emotionally, my head is clear. My child is happy. I'm happy. So I've got more rest time and more time to do the things that we enjoy, me and my child. So, yeah. So it's it's just a beautiful job. It's a beautiful job. I'm, I'm happy. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> I love this so, so much. Thank you for sharing. Um, like, wow, I hear this a lot with people in the Money Magic course and with my clients that, you know, the thing that really shocked them, myself too, when I started doing this work was how the less I worked, the more money I made, you know, and, things, and you know, I, I used to I talk about that so often and people never believe me until it starts happening to them. Then they're like, how in hell did that happen? I'm like, I it didn't. Makes sense to me when I said, yeah, this, this being part of this family. I was like, is this so? I was like, I think, no, I, no, it never makes sense to me. Up until <laughs> I saw it happening to people that were in the group and the money magic student. And then I experienced it like, oh, wow, really? It's so no, it's not like magic. <laughs> it never used to make sense to me. That's too good to be true. How is it possible? <laughs> I love so, yeah, that. but it's a beautiful thing to experience. It's a beautiful thing to experience. You're like, wow. <laughs> you feel like you're on holiday every day you at work. You're like, oh, mm, that was good. <laughs> No, I, I love it. Like the thing that really amazes me though is how this stuff was always there. Like the things that always shocked me is when I start doing the work, all these new opportunities and things come into my life. And it's not like they created new jobs, new opportunities, new companies. It's just that they were always there, but somehow they were just never in my vicinity. <laughs> it always amazes me to say other people had access to this, but because of my trauma and my belief systems, I believe that there was only one way to make money or one way to approach things. And I never would have imagined that there was a different way of doing work or moving in this world 
So I I absolutely love it. I mean, for me, I am back at prioritizing the inner work above all else. You know, I spent 2023 prioritizing the practical stuff and everything. It has not gotten me as far as 2024 got me with prioritizing the inner work so far. So I am back here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you are like, yes, this is it. It's amazing how it happens. <laughs> it definitely happens. You're like, oh, okay. This is, it feels good. <laughs> It feels good. It does. Honestly, it doesn't feel like you're working. You just feel good. Oh. And you just ask yourself, go to why didn't these opportunities come a long way? Like ages ago. Why will because I remember I was chatting to my sister and I was like, why didn't this come? Why do I have to, why had why did I have to work all these years so hard? If mm -hmm. there are other people that work easy jobs and mm -hmm. like this and get paid better and have more time for themselves to themselves when why did i have to put in so much long hours stressful units um yeah like hectic shifts when they are there's an, a better side of the coin mm -hmm. so like why now so only but you don't get to ask yourself those questions when you are in still doing picking up these difficult long shifts only when yeah. you've experienced the other time, you're like, wow, why did I allow myself to suffer so much when other kids mm -hmm. are having a chilled time on the other side? So, <laughs> no, I get you because I'm also like, why and how? But this is just the way that things are, I guess. Like, we don't know what we don't know because. Our trauma leads us to recreate the life of our parents and our caregivers. So we just, basically trauma is all about survival, not expansion. So your brain, your nervous system, everything within you is trained to keep you surviving and alive. So your brain believes, just like your nervous system believes, these are the things that kept my people alive my caregivers alive. So these are the things that I need to do to stay alive. And when you try to make changes without first changing on a nervous system level, it can be very, very traumatic for the body, which we've already talked about. And it can literally lead to the body falling ill, depending on how deeply your nervous system believes that the old ways are your survival mechanisms, that that is the way that you survive. So, yeah, Nontovego, you have given us so much today. Thank you for your time. I know people probably have a lot of questions to ask you about working abroad, having a special needs child, any of those things. How do people get hold of you? How do they have a conversation with you? Um, can I, okay, they, people can engage with me um, on Facebook. Um, they can WhatsApp me, Instagram, okay. also big Instagram. <laughs> what else? They can email me. Do you want me to share my details here? Yeah, if I don't yeah, know. you can if you feel comfortable. I will share everything except your WhatsApp number in the description below. So you guys can yeah. look out for Nontovego's Facebook um link here in the details i'll also share her email but it will be written out it won't just be the email because i don't want spam to collect her email and for her to be sent junk mail but yeah you can share your whatsapp number with us so people can reach out yes my number is 071 Fantastic. And if you're not in South Africa, that starts with plus two seven. Nantovero, thank you so much. And Money Magicians, thank you for joining us. If you've been listening to this and you're like, wow, I am starting to understand what the hype is about the Money Magic course and I want to be part of it. As you can see, Nantovego's shifts didn't just happen from her listening to me on Facebook, watching the podcast. Yes, we share a lot of valuable stuff. But the key, when we talk about the work,
the work that we're talking about are guided meditations in the Money Magic course. That is the core of the work, and they are accompanied by um by journal, journal prompts after each meditation. That is the core of my work. The meditations are super powerful. We're talking to, we're bringing elements from the ancestral realm. We're tapping into angelic realms. We're really tapping into our higher selves. And we're working on shifting our money stories across past lives, this lifetime, and in the ancestral plane. And that's where the magic starts to happen. We're healing our trauma by healing our ancestors' trauma. And just by default, also showing up better in our relationships with our children, with, if you've got kids, I don't yet, with our spouses, with our families, right? And that's where the shift starts to happen. So if you're listening to this and it is resonating with you and you want to join the Money Magic course, Check out the link at the bottom of this video in the description. Book a discovery call with myself and Lumisa, and we can have a conversation. And if you're like me and you love to work with coaches and you love one-on-one -on -one work with coaches, reach out, right? Let's have a conversation, do some one-on-one -on -one work together. I do have space. And if by the time this podcast is, I am fully booked, then you can just get on my waiting list. Okay, and without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next podcast episode. Cheers! Bye, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mantamega. Bye, bye, Vanil. Thank you, sis. Thank you very much for having me. Bye.